Thomas Jefferson would beat John Adams in the 1800 presidential election. However, he tied his supposed running mate, Aaron Burr. Side note, the original presidential election were designed that the runner-up would become the vice president. Anyways, through political error, or perhaps through political manipulation by Aaron Burr, Burr and Thomas Jefferson both got an equal amount of electoral votes. The decision would eventually be decided by Congress, and with a little help from his longtime former rival, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson would win the election. Hamilton believed Burr was kind of the worst person ever. Burr would eventually shoot Hamilton in the liver and spine, killing him and probably proving him right. There was a whole video devoted to that beef on this channel. Jefferson thought Burr tried to steal the presidency from underneath him, so even though Burr was vice president, he was ostracized. The rainbows and butterflies in the 1800 election is that one political party handed over power to a separate political party with zero bloodshed. It was kind of a big deal and a major test to the constitution on which the whole system was written. So really, the best thing Adams did for the presidency was to leave it peacefully. Side note, John Adams, we don't mean to tease you so hard. We love the stuff you did in the early 70s and 80s, but this 90s and new century stuff, meh, not so much. It's not you, Adams. It's us. We just need our freedom. Jefferson had been talking jive about how aristocratically, or fancy pants, the presidents acted. So Jefferson found his least fancy pair of pants and dressed down for his inauguration and spoke of unity by saying, we are all Federalists. We are all Republicans. Jefferson became a more accessible president than his predecessors. He would meet with people at the door of the White House, and he changed the meeting formality from a bow to a handshake. Jefferson believed in a more direct style of democracy. He believed the role of the federal government was just to chill out as much as possible. You know, maybe fight some pirates and make some money, but that's about it. He shrank the size of the federal government, got rid of most taxes, and pardoned people charged with the Sedition Acts. Meet James Madison, founding father and Thomas Jefferson's Secretary of State. And when he got his new office, he found a stack of judge paperwork on the desk that needed to be completed. And if you remember, on the last few days of the John Adams presidency, he and a Federalist Congress created and filled Dozens of federal judge positions with fellow Federalist Party members. They created so many so quickly that they weren't able to properly file and complete the details on all the paperwork before they left office. So they left that work to the Jefferson administration. This was a real jerk move. So when Madison asked Jefferson if he should complete the paperwork, Jefferson probably chuckled and said, No way, dude. Those guys are total jerks. And we don't want them around anyways. It didn't take long for individuals who were supposed to be judges to realize <laughs> they weren't judges yet. One of those judges would be Marbury, and he sued Madison in the Supreme Court. Marbury versus Madison is the most monumental precedent in Supreme Court history. So at the Supreme Court hearing, Marbury was all like, Make James Madison file this paperwork. I was voted into the judge position legally by Congress. The Supreme Court was all like, what are you even doing here? I just thought that we are the Supreme Court, not Judge Judy. Our job is to determine if laws are legal based off the Constitution. Good day, sir. But what about my... I said good day. And that's how Judiciary Review was created, which really gives us the solid structure of the three separate but equal branches of government. Jefferson continued to scale back the budget with the creation of the Military Peace Establishment Act. This act massively scaled back the military and put caps on its personnel. West Point was created with this act as a way to train and develop new engineers loyal to America. Cutting military costs came at its own cost when pirates attacked. Prior to Jefferson, a huge percentage of our national budget went paying off pirates in North Africa to not attack our merchant ships. Jefferson, in his pursuit to cut the national budget, promised to stop making payments to these pirates, which the pirates were not super happy with. 
This led to a bunch of skirmishes, and even at one point, after pirates have gained control of a U.S. ship, U.S. forces, out of the fear of their own equipment being used to kill them, set fire to the ship, sinking it. These conflicts were called the Barbary Wars and would not be resolved in the Jefferson administration.